All right. Thank you all for joining us in this conversation today. I'm Nettie Owens, and I am the founder of the Momentum Community. And today I have with me Ruthie Bowles, who's been in the Momentum programs um, in the past. And um, I really am excited to get to share Ruthie with you because her story, when you hear it, is going to be a little different um, than some of the other stories that you've heard. And I do think it will resonate. Um, since I consider her one of our greatest success stories of momentum. So um, Ruthie, why don't you tell our listening, watching audience here a little bit about what you do now, and uh, and then we'll get into kind of what brought you to this point. Okay. So now, currently, I, uh, I'm in the book space now, like the audio book space specifically, um, and I'm an audiobook narrator, and I also do diversity consulting for like authors and other bookish businesses. And it's been quite the surprise. And I've even had an opportunity to write some of my own things. And I had a story published earlier this year in an anthology. So excellent, excellent. So when we met, which was back in 2020 in the pandemic um, is when we first crossed paths. Um, yes. This is not what you were doing. Do you wanna share a little bit about what you were doing then? And then we'll even rewind a little bit further to say- <laughs> to Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when we met in 2020, I was a marketing consultant. I was a marketing and brand consultant, um, specifically focusing around things like content and how content related to the brand. And we met through Jennifer McGinley, who is another Momentum com uh, community member um, who's been through the programs. And uh, she had introduced me to you and I interviewed you for my podcast. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, I was I was a marketing consultant and I did like content marketing strategy for small businesses, uh, even some of the bigger, large businesses. And I had started that up basically on my own and uh, got really close to six figures, even in that first year. So I was feeling pretty good about things. Yeah, that's a great start. Absolutely. 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then 2020, which definitely it made some things easier and some things harder and certainly changed the plans that we all had uh, for what we were thinking we were mm -hmm. going to be doing. Um, what got you into wanting to, to go out on your own and start your own uh, marketing and content company? So funnily enough, I had a big realization recently uh, within the last few weeks about why I quit my former job when the last time I was an employee. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was a federal contractor and that was after I had gotten out of the army. After spending eight and a half years in the military, I became a federal contractor. I, well, at first I went to become a stay at home mom and I had my third child and then I went back to work. I had never not been working. So that was, you know, that was hard. Um, getting out and being a stay-at-home mom and having a new baby. Uh, I was in an identity crisis and I didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought going back to work would help that identity crisis. Mm -hmm. And it did not. Um, and the big realization I had recently is that being a federal contractor, doing the same job that I had been doing while I was in the military uh, was just showing me all of the things that I missed all of the all of the facets of my identity that that were shaped around being a soldier that were all now just bereft without connection and i was working with service members as well as other civilians mm -hmm. and it it was very unhappy for me i realized I, if i was going to do that job i had to be serving while i was doing it right. um and I had applied to become a, so I was a federal contractor. I'd applied to become a government civilian, um, but they, they lost my paperwork. <laughs> it went into a digital file that nobody was checking for months. Oh and in that time, I was like, oh, you know, it'd be great is uh, we, you know, I would love to be able to just get paid to write. That would be kind of cool. And I'll just do it a little bit on the side and it'll just get us like a little extra money for like my chickens or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing it and people started hiring me. Like I wasn't making like crazy money out the gate or anything, but I was like, I paid for a blog post mm -hmm. Get out of here. 
<laughs> and uh, it turned out that some of the skills I had learned while I was in the military um, uh, for like analysis and things like that uh, were really transferable traits in terms of things like content marketing analysis and learning how to do search engine optimization. And not just that, but also learning how to do it in a way that didn't look gross and spammy. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that a lot of people who came to me for blog content and like website content, what they really wanted and what they really needed was not just somebody to write the things, but also somebody who knew what to write and how to figure out what to write to help them connect that, you know, connect or bridge the gap rather between what their ideal client or customer was looking for and what they had and mm -hmm. how they could use content to bridge that gap. And so, um, I was writing part-time in, I think, the summer of 2017, and then I had my fourth child in April of 2018 and used my maternity leave to go full-time. So I had about a part-time income. I knew exactly what I needed to make to be able to quit and still pay for, like, my nanny, and that's what happened. And so the last time I went there, I turned in my badge, I picked up my stuff, and I was out. Wow. What a fantastic journey. And it, and we could stop there. Like we could just stop there and be like, that's amazing. There's so that was great. People, you know, who would, who would, who are thinking about that. And what I love is how much you have, um, and, and this is true as we go forward, but how much you've really taken the experiences and expertise that you've gained along the way and then applied it forward. So you look at what it is that you're trying to create where you want to be. And then you're like, where do I have in my toolkit? And then you use it and you're so resourceful in that way. And then, uh, and then you reach the goal that you're trying to, to achieve. So this is 2017 fast forward a few years, we meet and you're, you're doing this content and brand marketing. <clears throat> um, and, and that's your desire is to continue to grow in that particular way. And when mm -hmm. we first met, you, you interviewed me, uh, I was writing a book mm -hmm. and, um, and then I interviewed you, uh, for, for my book as well. And, um, and then, um, and we started talking about, about what it would be like if I supported you as a coach and you were hilarious. Cause the whole time you're like, I'm not working with a coach. I'm not working with a coach. Coaches are are no good. And I totally get where you were coming from on that. Um, and then you, and then you did end up working with a coach and, um, that was quite an experience and it led to be honest, it led to some of the success that you're having now, because what happened? Sure didn't seem like it at the time though. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I know. so yeah. So like we had talked, but I mm -hmm. hadn't really taken this idea of coaches. Like, cause I, I think at the time I was mostly indifferent about coaches. Like I, I didn't really quite understand where they could fit in like the role of a business, especially from my perspective where I'm like, well, I've come this far by myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, and so in 2020, I was starting like a lot of people to kind of question what it was I was doing. And I was starting to get the sense that content marketing and like marketing strategy and stuff, I, I really enjoy like planning out marketing strategy, but like, especially the content side of things, um, I realized that I, what I really enjoyed was being good at it, not necessarily <laughs> doing it. Um, and so that was kind of that zone of, uh, so it wasn't my zone of genius. It was that third area. It was a, like a zone of expertise. Like I could be good at it, but it wasn't, I, it started to lose its luster once I started to feel like I was in a bit of a rut. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was kind of questioning like what I was doing, how I could make my business have not just an impact on business metrics, but also on, issues and causes and things that I cared about. And I just didn't feel like that was happening. Well, I saw a Facebook ad. I saw a Facebook ad. I bought an ebook for $7. I read the ebook. It had very good information, information I hadn't really considered. I was like, this is smart stuff. Good, cool. And I was like, all right. And then they sent me a text message. I don't even remember giving them my phone number, but obviously I did. And then they asked if they could call me. And I'm like, man, 
this has never happened to me before. Interesting, fascinating. So I get on the phone with them and I've described this this way before, but like I was like a sheep happily skipping up the ramp to the slaughterhouse. It like upon reflection, I was like, those aren't red flags. Those are roses, you know. <laughs> I was just like, la, la, la. And I just checked all the boxes for them. Like it, they, anyway, moving on from that. Um, And so, yeah, so they got $10,000 out of me. I'm like, man, that's a lot of money. But they, one of the big things that they tapped into that I had still been kind of missing was the sense of like community and identity that I had when I was in the military. So I had moved and become a content person and then, and I was already kind of isolated. And I tried to solve that by going to networking events and stuff on a weekly basis and getting plugged into the local community in like the Baltimore DC area. But then COVID hit and I'm isolated with my family in my house and all I have are virtual things. And they made it sound like I was gonna go into a community of people who were go-getters and hard hitters, just like I was. And they said, you know, they were like, yeah. And, you know, just follow the steps. And like, there's, there's no reason why you can't be successful. And I'm like, yeah, well, I was in the military for eight and a half years. I know how to follow steps. Oh yeah. Like we had to march, we had to march in time. I could do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> which actually actually that brainstorming or that brainwashing in the military has actually made me more vulnerable as a person to these types of tactics um and so yeah so they convinced me after my i think it was 10 weeks initial 10 weeks in the program that what i needed was what i needed was more time but they didn't have a mechanism for me to get more time. They felt, they kept telling me I was like right on the cusp. I was right there, so close to my 10,000, 15,000, $20,000 months. And so they got another $18,000 out of me. Um, and I was put into a program, so-called, that had less structure than the first one I was in and left me to flounder a lot. So they, I signed with them in August of 2020. And by December of 2020, my confidence was in such a place that I just, I have a distinct memory of walking my goat, because I have goats, mm -hmm. walking my goat to her milking stand and thinking, you know what, like they had gotten me so twisted up that I was like, you know what? maybe I'm just not cut out for this. I went from almost hitting six figures in my first year on my own to hitting a point where I'm like, I must not be cut out for this. Like they're so great. They have all these answers and I'm still not making money. I'm still not having the change that I want to have. I'm following this goat to the goat stand. I'm like, maybe I'll just stop doing everything. I can pull my daughter out of daycare or my two kids out of daycare, the two that were still in. And I can just post farm pictures. People like goats. They like pictures of the chickens, like because I'm obviously not cut out to be self-employed, obviously. Um, and then things shifted a bit in 2021 and I hired more coaches after I got on Clubhouse. Um, they were better. They were better. Um, but it did, working with them helped me as I was deconstructing my experience from the first coaching program. And that is when I started to explore things like consciousness as it relates to, so first it was authenticity. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know about authenticity. What does it mean to truly show up in an authentic way online? Because that was another thing I learned in 2020 is that people liked the real me, the mm -hmm. authentic me when I wasn't pretending or trying to be all, you know, buttoned up and professional, professional all the time. Right. And so I wanted to learn more about what it meant to be authentic. And then I was like, okay, well, what does it mean to be authentic? Then now that's when I started researching things like consciousness and creativity. And I ended up looking at ethics as well, because that's kind of an exploration of like personal morality, but also how it relates to like business. And so as I was with that program, I realized that as wonderful a people as they were, as nice as they were, there were still some things that were wrong intrinsically with the model that they were trying to run. Um, they had mm -hmm. capped it. It was supposed to be, I think, like a 12-week program. And that in right there, that right there is like, that's not going to work. Unless you have a bunch of people whose businesses are pretty much exactly the same, how can you tell me that I'm going to be done after 12 weeks? Mm -hmm. That right there was a huge problem. Um, 
and I know that that's, and that's the thing is, and people think you have to be a bad person or a person who doesn't care, an unscrupulous person, like the people, the first coaches I had who didn't care that they were taking advantage of me and taking my money. These people cared. These people cared a lot. That didn't stop them from running a model that was inherently, intrinsically just not going to work. That basically is unethical. Um, not that they knew it, right? I don't believe that they knew that. Um, and so it took me time, like working with them and, and kind of deconstructing that and seeing that that was not going to work. They were good people. I liked them. It's not that I didn't learn anything, but one of the most important things I did learn was that that model is just inherently flawed, period. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, now I know I'm not going to buy any more of those. I'm not going to buy any more of those. Like I, some great lessons, but that was the most important one I learned is that you can't cap my growth at 12 weeks with some type of cookie cutter program. Mm -hmm. 20, 20 the end of 2021 that's when I'm like okay I did I think it was the momentum online mm -hmm. right I signed up for that and we're doing the planning and I'm like oh man okay I like this this business planning and we're like we're talking and I'm like okay how can I uh, you know, try and, or I guess it was a little bit further into 2021, but I'm trying to figure out like how to make this work for me and talking to you, we came up with so many different ideas. And I think that was one of the most helpful things about being in momentum for me. It was like an incubator for my ideas and it was a safe space to give something a go and get, get feedback and like, feel like I didn't have to commit to it for like a whole year of my life. Like, Hey, so there are certain metrics we can observe and this isn't working for you. So let's try something else. And I think that that was really important for me aside also from like the accountability of actually doing things and getting things done. Um, and so that was one of the things I try, I went through a lot of different iterations of trying to make this like kind of brand, uh, coaching brand consulting model work for me, approaching it from the aspects of audio or like video and podcasting and authority marketing. Like we approached it from a lot of different angles. And then eventually, um, while I was with you, I hit this point where I was like, look, I hate it here. <laughs> I hate it here. I don't want to do this anymore. It's not that I didn't want to be self-employed, but I had just become so utterly disenchanted with the coaching and consulting space as a whole, you know, trying to cater to them as my target ideal clients. Uh, when I realized the vast majority of them were struggling to make money as well, no matter what their Facebook or Instagrams look like, they were struggling too. And and then I came to you and I remember there was one other member in that call that time and it, and I looked it up actually just the other day. Uh, and it was 50 things that I could do to make money. Cause I was like, at this point I am struggling. Like I don't, I can't pull together a solid resume. That's going to get me an interview because everybody's like, what the heck does any of this mean? Um, and I still needed to pay bills. And that's what you did. We sat down and you're like, okay, let's start with some of the things that are very related to what you're doing now. And then as we go, we can just add whatever on there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that ended up on the list I mentioned, because neither you nor the person who was on that call knew, I was like, did y'all know that I narrated an audiobook for fun in 2019? And both of you were like, and you were like, it's going on the list. <laughs> and I, I looked at a couple other things, I think for the next like few days, like trying to make stuff happen. But I looked this up as well on December 31st of 2021. Mm -hmm. That was my anniversary of making a move on that audiobook, that audiobook idea of being a narrator. I messaged in the DMs, the author of the first book I narrated because she had six other books. And I was like, Hey, did you find somebody else to do this for you? Or like, do you still want me to do it? Like, I, I did not put any thought into that message at all. I was just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she's like, Oh my God, yes, please. And I was like, okay. So I started working on that book and I started auditioning for other books on ACX and I auditioned and my audition to project, like getting the project ratio was really good. And I started getting projects. And at that same time, I, uh, at the beginning of 2022, I started shifting uh, what I was talking about on TikTok 
because that was where I had been talking about a lot of coach stuff or whatever. And book talk, it's kind of like for anybody who doesn't know what that means, it's like how people talk about like various sub communities in Twitter, mm-hmm. right? Like you've got author Twitter and stuff like that. You got black Twitter and stuff. Book talk is the book community over on TikTok. And there were a couple authors I had connected with anyway, who just liked to hear what I had to say. And I liked reading their books. And I got a book from one of them. They were like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were narrating now. Let me talk to you about my book. And I, I got one. That was my first TikTok author book that I got just by talking. Mm-hmm. And and it just, it just spitballed from there. And I realized that I, I truly enjoyed what I was doing and that there was a need for uh, narrators of color in the audiobook space. And I got a book. I got an audition. I I responded to an audition request from a company on Instagram that a friend had sent to me. And it turned out that that book was published by Disney, Disney's publishing company. I thought it was a scam initially, thought it was a scam because they were like, congratulations, you got it. And I'm like, joke, thanks. I'm being punked. I reached out to somebody. I was like, do you know these people? Is this real? Like, this seems very fake. And he's like, no, yeah, that's them. That's real. And I was like, and that was when I felt like I had to really, I was like, look, I am getting green lights here. Like I'm only, I, and that book happened to, I got that book in May of 2022. So I just started again. Right. Like, and I just done that one. I didn't talk about it really, but January, 2022 to May, 2022, I felt like I had gotten a lot of green lights and nothing was really happening on the branding coaching side. And so I felt like, I was like, I feel like this is like screaming from the universe. Like you're into this like a five months and you're good enough to do a Disney book with a Grammy award-winning audiobook production company. And I was like, that's something, that's a sign I feel like. And so that was when I made the decision that I was just going to kind of close everything down on the brand and marketing consulting side and just close that chapter of my self-employed entrepreneurship journey And things have continued to still be awesome. Like later in 2022, I got my first audiobook award. And it's funny because I was up for one award last year. Same awards, same awards. I'm up for six. I got nominated in six different categories this year. Um, I just found out I was nominated in another awards for Black narrators who've narrated books by Black authors. And I'm in two different categories, two books I did in two different categories for that. Um, And I just, I I have wonderful clients. Um, And it was a summer 2022. An author asked me if I would sensitivity read her book, which is when, you know, you have a particular background the author doesn't have, and they want you to read their book and let them know if they've included anything offensive in it. Turns out I was really good at that, especially once um, I had decided to major in psychology, because again, deconstructing all the cult coaching stuff. And you know, you encouraged me along the way for a lot of that and looking at the different things that I could offer to um, to authors and just kind of in terms of like being a part of the community. Um, 2022 was when I decided, I was like, hey, let's do the Femme Audio Takeover. Mm-hmm. And that took over TikTok. People are still talking about it and we've done it multiple times and we're talking about doing it again in January. Um, but it was like once I accepted that, I don't want to say like, this is what I was meant to do. Cause I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. But once I accepted that this was something I could find joy in as well as abundance, like enough to feel like I was financially contributing to my family while not simultaneously preying on other people, trying to, in my own desperation to pay bills, get money from other people. I don't get money from anybody anymore. Authors come to me and they let me know what they would like to work with me on. And they know what my rates are. I'm very transparent about it. And they are ready to pay me. Mm -hmm. And I am booked into like June of next year. I could probably be booked further than that, but I'm like, everybody needs to chill. I'm not trying to let you guys lock me in for the next 10 years. So, you know, I only book out my calendar so far. So that way it gives me some flexibility still. But I just, I get to work on projects by other, um, by authors of color. So I usually I refer to them as racialized authors. 
Um, I've had the opportunity to sensitivity read a lot of amazing books and these authors want to have inclusive books. And I've been able to help them do that when I find things that I'm like, hey, so this this would be a problem. And I can help them brainstorm ways to fix it. And that is incredibly exciting for me that not only do I get to help authors bring their books to audio, especially for marginalized authors, like queer authors and authors of color, um, into this industry that they're vastly underrepresented in. Mm -hmm. um, but I also get to help authors who are trying to create worlds that are inclusive and welcoming for more people than just, you know, their people. Um, that is also incredibly amazing to me. And so I finally reached a point where I feel like I get to express myself in a creative way. That marketing background is still incredibly helpful. Um, and has allowed me to navigate a lot of different things because being an author, being a narrator is still a business just like anything else. Um, but I am also able to support causes and act on beliefs that I've had for a really long time. And so I feel very aligned with what it is that I'm doing. And I sh probably should have mentioned, but reading has always been if you're watching, you can see the bookshelves. There's actually a third bookshelf you can't see that's not on the camera. I have always loved to read. Um, I was able to attend my parents' wedding. I think I was like eight. Mm -hmm. I missed their kiss because my grandfather had given me a new book to read. So priorities, you know? Um, by the time somebody got my attention, they were done kissing. Like it was over. So like, I just, I feel like very aligned in what it is that I'm doing right now. And even now, like there are just so many opportunities coming for, for 2024. And I can't believe that we're here already, but at the same time, I'm also surprised it took so long. So I want to actually go back to that point <clears throat> because in your story, what I remember in the conversation, I don't remember the 50 ways, although I do know that is an exercise that you know, I have walked. That <laughs> spreadsheet still exists. I looked it up. Excellent. But I do remember very specifically a conversation where you were ready, you were just like throwing your hands up in the air and you're just like, honestly, all I want to do is read. If I could get paid to read, that would be great. I remember you saying that. And, um, and that I was also depressed. <laughs> I, binge, <laughs> I binge read a lot when I'm depressed. And so I'm so excited that you've been able to create a path for yourself where you do get paid to read and you get to pull together literally every piece of experience, every interest that you have into one cohesive place and you are joyful about it and it feels great and you make money off of it. Like you make real money off of what you're doing. You've leaned so much into yourself and you've been willing to... Um, you've been willing to take, in some cases, what seems on the front, an uncomfortable path, um, yes. and yet it has become, you know, such a, a wonderful place for you to be. Um, and the reason why I call you one of our best success stories is because, um, is because we got to a point where we both were like, yeah, you're good. Like, I think you got what you were looking for out of our time together and um, and we've been able to maintain, you know, our communication through the last year, really, of, um, mm -hmm. uh, of since that since that conversation. Um, I know what I was what I had to offer was not what you needed any longer. And um, and it felt really, really good to come to that point. And I know that there are other coaching programs out there where, and you've even just described them, like each next thing, they're just, it doesn't matter if it's a good fit. They're just looking to what's the next thing I can, I can sell you. <clears throat> so, yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's something that's really important to highlight, um, that people would probably benefit from hearing from me, um, is that like, that's how it was like the way that you just said it was how it was. It was just, we, we kind of both knew, you know, it was like, I was coming up, it was kind of like, okay, am I stopping? Am I signing up for another year? And, and because I had a plan that, that you helped me form, it's like, I think I kind of have a hold of things. Like, I, I feel like I know what I'm doing at this point. And, and this is, this is okay. Now it's, it's okay for me to kind of just kind of float out here and see what I can do on my own. Mm -hmm. And that, 
was the call. It was just, it was just kind of a, I, I, I wouldn't even call it bittersweet exactly. I think we both just kind of realized that that this particular phase of our relationship had come to its end. Like there was no pressure, there was no, and I, by that point I was, I already knew all the tips and tricks, <laughs> So, but there was no pressure. There was none of that. It was just, it was almost like when you've taken a really nice deep breath and then you let it out and there's that, there's that kind of like pause in between breaths where you have that like moment of stillness. And that's kind of how it felt when we were done with our call is that moment of stillness between breaths. And I think that that's something that's important for people to know for sure. We've talked for a couple months about having this conversation and sharing your story and what you experienced. Um, and it's kind of been on me. I, I just, I had said like, oh, we should do this. And you're like, yeah, you, we, that's fine. We can do this. And then, but this moment, I'm so glad that we're doing it now um, because it's been really joyful for me to be able to share these stories. Um, you're actually the third third person that I'm recording their story um, and be, and they will be shared out to the community by the time, obviously somebody's going to be watching this at some point um, mm -hmm. into the future. And so I'm, I'm curious if you, if you could just share something that surprised you about, about the work that we did together, or even just, you know, the people that you met, the community, what, what caught you off guard? I mean, by this point, as you've shared, you'd been in a number of different coaching programs. So you'd experienced a number of communities. What was different here? Um, I think one of the things that stood out for me is that one thing that there was in common is that in a lot of, in a, most of the programs that I had been in, the people were a bit disparate in terms of what they were doing and what their interests were and their businesses. Now, the Momentum program had the most disparate of all of the programs I had been in. And what surprised me was how well that worked. And that was kind of a shock. So most of all the other programs I've been in, they were targeted towards like consultants, mm -hmm. those types of, of people. Um, and, and those consultants often worked with like other service professionals, but that wasn't necessarily true for all of the people that I encountered in my time in the Momentum program. Um, you know, we had people who worked with other businesses, like not as like a solopreneur to another solopreneur, but they worked with like corporations and mm -hmm. stuff. We had people who were kind of more on the B to C side and working with like individuals, like not business people, but like individuals. And we had more people who were also like me, who were uh, working, you know, as consultants or whatever. And I think that that was one of the things that surprised me that I also found very enjoyable is that because it wasn't that we were all necessarily doing similar things. And so it brought also a diversity of perspective to things like our masterminds. Um, you know, uh, thinking of Jennifer McGinley again, like I got to spend a lot of time with Jennifer um, in the Momentum programs. And a lot of the things that she said um, as it related to, you know, public relations and being a professional, those are still things that, you know, bounce around in my head. So thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> but... I would say that was one thing that really stood out is like there was a disparate collection of people um, that were united on a higher level that transcended their particular business interests. And that wasn't necessarily something that I had seen in previous programs. Mm -hmm. I love that you brought that up. It's something that's really meaningful to me is that we do bring together <clears throat> such a wonderful group of, of folks. Um, and there are differences, not just in the businesses that they have or don't have, because some of the folks don't uh, are not the business owner, um, how long they've been in business, uh, but just in their own life experiences. We mm -hmm. have people who have been to college and people who have not, people who have been in the service, people who have not, different uh, religious backgrounds, different uh geographic locations that folks have grown up in. And I love that because of that diversity, the, the conversations are really meaningful and they do bring so many different perspectives um, that when we get funneled into 
you know, <clears throat> everybody being of a similar kind, of a similar business type or time in business or even business level, there are definitely perspectives that are missed that are going to help you uh, with what you need. And I, I, I'm, it's, I'm glad that you're bringing that up as the, as the thing to share with people. Uh, one last question before we go, and that is, you know, I, I know you are not part of the active community, although I do know that, you know, you still have the ability and do stay in touch with, with members who you met um, in the community. And we encourage that, like, <clears throat> again, I've seen where people discourage that. And that's really unfortunate. It's like, these folks are friends. Like, why would they not stay in touch? Um, I know, little, that that's one of those red flags. It's not a rose. <laughs> it's not a rose. <laughs> not a rose. Um, uh, but is there something that you would share with somebody who's thinking about considering joining our community um, and any of the programs that are here? What might you say to them? Um. So as I was talking about those disparate and diverse perspectives, um, I, I do think that the fact that it is was still so successful for me, mm -hmm. um, and I won't even say despite that, I will say because of that is, is, is a contributing factor in what made it so successful for me. Um, I think it just really underscores the sound business principles that are discussed and shared and the, uh, the business muscles, if you will, that like your exercises help work and the value of the community. Um, I think that that level of diversity helps underscore exactly how sound the business principles are um, that you get to learn about and practice and see other people practice and engage in um, because there's no one set way to do it. There is a way for you to take this business principle, take your business and then mm, be like a kid with some Play-Doh and see what comes out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think that that is something really important for people to know is that with all the different possible manifestations of a business that you could have, um, what you fostered in the momentum programs and therefore the momentum community um, is something that's going to give them a space to to really learn what it looks like and feels like to implement those sound business principles that allow you to survive things like pandemics and economic crashes and inflation and all other types of things, Commu you know, technological advancements. And I think that's what gets lost is that, you know, momentum and it's like, and all of its associated communities, you've always focused on uh, business strategy and business principle. Like, yes, we learn and talk about tactics, but only as they relate to the strategy and the principle, because the strategy and the principle, those principles are what last through time. It's not the tactic because as soon, you know, great example, everybody was like, oh, Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. And then Facebook was like, nah, pay me and really bumped up the ads. I think it was like January, 2015 and people's businesses crumbled. People went from $30,000 months to nothing because Facebook wanted to get paid now. And they were not flexible and agile in terms of adapting their strategy. And I think that that is something momentum allows for a lot is that, that diversity, that opportunity to experiment, but also um, the ability to implement principles without becoming too married to tactics. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, then I'm so glad you're pointing that out. And the amazing thing is that a lot of these principles and strategies apply to business, but they also apply to any other thing that you're trying to achieve in your life. Um, and so we do have people who are not entrepreneurs, who are not business owners, who come in and use these tools to get what they're trying to get out of life. And, and because of that, we can pull in than the tactic that applies to that unique situation um, and, and the person uh, is then successful. So thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that. Ruthie, it has been an absolute pleasure. Um, if somebody's watching this and they're like, this is amazing. I have not actually sat down and listened to an audiobook um, voice that, you know, person who provides that voice, then what should they do? And, or if they've got a book that they would like sensitivity read, or if they just want to find you on social, can you give them a, some direction to head in? <laughs> Absolutely. So if you Google my name, Ruthie Bowles, um, you will find a lot of things. 
Um, one of those, a lot of those things will probably be my social media handles. Um, and I'm pretty easy to find and reach there because thanks marketing. Uh, but also, uh, my website is no market for that book.com because everybody I work with has gotten told probably at one point or another that there's no market for the book that they're trying to write and they're still going to write it and they're determined to prove them wrong. And I like being along for the journey in whatever capacity that is going to be. So yeah, so my website's a good place, um, but you can also reach me on social media, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook. You can find me just by searching my name. And that's because I still got good SEO. <laughs> <laughs> those skills have definitely come in handy definitely check her out on social media uh i know the tiktok um videos that you were doing were one reason that you really got some traction and mm -hmm. they're pretty amazing i love to refer back to them myself so uh definitely check that out Rithi. it's been such a pleasure and joy to get to talk to you today thank you so much for sharing your momentum story thank you for the opportunity